Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, do I got a real badass and a real treat for you, Dr. John Jake. Wish what's happening? Welcome hey, thanks for having me, Brad. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. This is great. For those of you that may not have heard of Dr. Jake Wish, you may have heard of the device he invented, or X3 system, which is like the newest, baddest way to freaking get ripped, grow muscle, gain muscle, lose body fat without stepping into a gym that's right and by the way nowadays that's most important yeah yeah especially if they're telling you to impede your breathing with a mask while you work out which well, is something obviously written by a person who's never exercised well it's the thing is like you know i'm not a big fan of the mask period like i won't wear them my kids won't wear them no. i pulled them out of school so they don't have to wear them you right. can't you're not designed to breathe in your own freaking exhale right right well, and never mind the mold that grows in masks because it's moist and then you keep it in your pocket. It's like a mold sponge. So, yeah, let's do that. Now, that's not going to create any respiratory problems. Oh, dude. So so now better time than other. Well, it's been blowing up even before COVID, but I yeah. think since COVID, everybody's out ordering the X3 system. Yeah. Which are, yeah. I, I don't want to, like, it's kind of lousy that I'm doing really well because of, a, you know, like an international crisis, but... I think that helps. Uh, it, it does. And uh, l- here's a statistic for you. Gym equipment, strength equipment, has 300 times the bacteria, viruses, and pathogens than a public toilet seat. Yeah. Because people spit while they exercise. They're and, spitting all over the equipment. And sweat. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's more what comes out of your mouth is the problem. Dude, one, that's, yeah. why, that's why when I work out at a gym or otherwise, I don't want a spotter. Yeah, like, they're, dude, they're coughing in your mouth. Well, not well, not only that, yeah. dude. I swear to you, this is a freaking. Everyone always says, "Yeah, right." I'm saying, I'm telling you the truth. This one dude, Eddie, I was telling you about earlier. Mm-hmm. He's getting a freaking spot on the bench press. I'm watching, dude. This dude, this is back in the day when dolphin shorts were something. Oh, okay. So this dude walks up and he's basically standing over the guy, freaking getting ready to lift lift this off his fucking chest, and it, mm-hmm. and it looked like ball sweat or something dropped out of his shorts and hit the dude in the forehead yeah yeah, so yeah. you're gonna give somebody a nightmare with a story yeah i don't want so, i don't yeah. want to i don't want a spotter quite yeah. frankly i don't want to go to the gym if there is covid you know to a point that it's there it's probably at a gym i want to work yeah. out at home yeah so again i've got your x3 system i started using it it feels like less it feels like i don't feel the 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 pain and suffering that yeah. when you go to the gym and hit it hard it feels it feels like it's not working but it seems to be tightening my shit pretty quick i don't know about yeah. growth yet i just that, started that's a good explanation because you don't get sore from it and it really highlights when for people who start to understand how it's working when you feel pain from a workout it, it's not necessarily a good thing and most often it's not a good thing see that's what we're taught though of course. We've I, taught all I, kinds of wrong stuff. I'm taught, you know, when you work out, you're ripping down the muscle, and then when, you, yeah, and then it builds back true. stronger. Yeah. So that so when it hurts, that's the that's the ripping down of the muscle. That's good. You want to be you want to have pain. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't. I, the last sixty pounds of muscle I put on, I did it with X3, and I've never been sore. No yeah. Once. Well, again, dude, that's my type of shit. Yeah. Now, folks, if you guys look this dude up, you're going to find out he's like business partners with Tony Robbins. He's invented some shit for osteoporosis. You you invented a whole thing to like basically reverse osteoporosis. Yeah, that was how I got my start. My mother was diagnosed with osteoporosis, and I, I saw it a little differently. And in fact, I invented it before I went and got my Ph.D., uh, and my, all my professors said, you would have talked yourself out of this if you had done your education first, because it is so crazy, unconventional, your approach. And what I did was I, I looked at how compression of bone at a certain level will stimulate growth of the density of that bone, make the bone more powerful. Like it's broke? 
No, um, like it's irritated. And to protect itself from the irritant, which is axial force, force that runs from end to end, uh, to protect itself, it needs to become more powerful. And so when you stimulate it, it in, you release the stimulation, the minerals start getting pulled into the bone, and the bone starts to recalcify. And anybody who's looked at a cross-section of a bone, it looks like a honeycomb, kind of a, you know, a, non, a non-regular, non-mathematically symmetrical kind of uh, structure, but a little bit like a honeycomb. And more little walls get built within the bone, and the walls that exist become thicker so that it becomes a more, a more, more powerful structure. And osteoporosis is when your bones just snap pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, they're brittle. They're brittle. It typically happens. Well, it's associated with aging, but children get it. It's a disuse dysfunction. So when you look at disuse dysfunctions, well, okay, so let's use it. But the problem with that is putting... Uh, so it's mostly associated with high impact. So gymnasts have the highest bone density... They also have the highest injury rate of pretty much any type of athlete. They, they retire at the age of 19 for a reason. So what I needed to do was create a medical device that gave the benefit of the, the high-impact forces without the risks. So you could get the growth and not the, not the damage or the risk of, of injury. And now uh, there's 140 clinics in eight different countries, and they're called OsteoStrong locations. Wow. Yeah. So you guys, like, he's, like, you know, globally known for, for breaking through shit. But the book, I think, weightlifting is a waste of time, so is cardio, and there is a better way to have the body you want. Yeah. Where, where do people get that book? Anywhere? Amazon? Amazon. Just go to Amazon. I'd go get that book, folks, only because not only does he say it and state it, but damn near every case study proves it. What are the, what are the other docs saying about this any any uh strength coaches calling you full of shit or anything? Uh, i actually got an endorsement from the miami heat strength coach uh who's in the strength uh hall of fame so it's a very scientific book it, it's not written to be scientific but i back up everything i say with with uh, academic research and there's 250 uh academic studies that are referenced one of them is yet to publish because i get accused of, like i said that in about one study it's uh, a study that i uh, i co-authored with somebody from nasa and it was about a bone density it was about uh it was done done w- using my invention and it's so funny like i say there's about one out of 250 studies and it's like oh all this is unverified you know, because trolls will say anything. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, everything is well supported. And I really needed to create one source of information where all of this was so people could really understand, oh, okay, like the way variable resistance can be applied at a very high level is ridiculously superior to weight training. You're going to see far less injuries, far more growth, uh, and you're going to be able to apply it to much larger populations, much older populations. Uh, previously, if you went, if, if the average, let's say, 45-year-old goes and approaches a bodybuilding coach and says, you know, I want to put on, you know, 30, 40 pounds of muscle. I want to look like, you know, Mr. Olympia. What most coaches will say is, yeah, you should have started on that dream like 20 years ago. Cause Too it's late. Not, it's not going to happen for you now. Like, you can get in better shape. You know, you'll be able to see your abs, but you're not going to get big. Not at this age. Um, and it's because of the limitations. Like, weightlifting is an awful stimulus. You underload muscle. I'm going to quote Peter Atia here. You know, you know Dr. Atia? No. Um, really, really famous guy. He's, uh, he's now more of a researcher and author uh, than a practicing medical doctor. He was a very smart guy. And uh, he's said on multiple occasions, the problem with weightlifting is you overload joints and underload muscle. Well, X3 does the opposite. It overloads muscle. <laughs> uh, it overloads muscle and underloads joints so that you stimulate the muscle and you don't create any joint damage. I can see, I can see how, that, how that works. Like I said, my buddy, he's broke down now. You know, he was Mr. Yeah. Musclehead, you know. 
yep. walking around with all the other muscle head buddies of mine when we were growing up. Mm-hmm. And I went to the gym with them, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, come on, seven more. No, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'd say, I listen to my body. They'd make fun of me. I'd listen to my body. Well, now they're all broke down. And right. that makes perfect sense. It's because the joints yeah. were, were doing most, most of the damage and the muscles weren't getting enough. Yeah. Even though they were growing. Right. But it's, that, that's a short run, you know. And a long term short, problem. Thing. Yeah. I mean, like if you're running a marathon and you start sprinting, well, you're not going to finish the marathon. Yeah. And, you know, last I checked, life is, you want, you want life to go on. Well, the key to the end of the book title, the way to have the body you want, that's the thing. I think people are convinced that they have to go, you know, destroy their body and tendons and joints in order to look the way they want to look. Mm-hmm. And what you've proven is that's total bullshit. Yeah. I have definitely proven that. Now, if you guys already are like, dude, I got to check this out, and you're sitting at a computer, go, where's the X3 system website? Uh, X3bar.com. And then if somebody wants to learn about me, drj.com. Dr. J. Doc. You got Dr. J. Yeah. Is current, it D O C T O R? Yeah. D O C T O R, the letter J. Dot com. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I, I think Julius Irving has been fishing for a number of years and he just gave it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you can keep it because you're not cyber squat and you are Dr. J. Yeah, I am Dr. J. So, sure. Dr. J. Dot com, X3 bar, just like the X, number three bar, B A R dot com. Correct. X3 bar dot com. This is ultimately a base. And some bands, some real thick quality yeah. bands. Do those Just, bands ever break? I was wondering, like, if I leave these out in the Vegas sun, are they going to deteriorate faster? Yes. So should everything I, deteriorates faster in the Vegas sun? You know, in that in that little people deteriorate faster in the Vegas sun. Yeah, you ain't lying. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, Vegas I'm 27. Look at me. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but the cool part about your 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 thing is like it doesn't take up any room. No, it fits in a backpack. Yeah, like it's like unbelievable. And it doesn't feel like it works, but it's working. Yeah. The other day, my wife grabbed my arm. She said, oh, I'm like, what? She goes, I can always tell when you're working out again. And I'm like, I'm not really working out. I'm just using those yeah, bands. Right, yeah. And she's, like, and she's like, dude, you're... you're. Well, the bands, so the bands, I, I, I typically ask people not to describe it as bands because... Bands by themselves don't really do anything because they're very light. Well, there's a bar too. Oh, oh yeah, but not, let me get to that. the 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 problem with bands as they exist, uh, they were really developed. The bands that exist today are, were developed for rehab, so they're very lightweight. When you get a band heavy enough, and let's say you throw it around your back, and you start doing push ups with it, uh, if it's if it's heavy enough to give you a strength benefit, it's probably heavy enough to break your wrist too. Because you're twisting your wrist as the you know the band wraps around the outside of your wrist, your hand is being rotated outward, and it doesn't like that. So uh, you'll either have neural inhibition and not be able to complete a single rep, or you might actually break your wrist. That's why we needed an Olympic bar and a second ground to stand on to keep the small bones in the wrists and in the ankles protected. Once you do that and keep them neutral. They can create incredible forces when kept neutral. So when I do a chest press, I'm holding 540 pounds for repetitions. 20, even closer. My my, my best is like 28 repetitions with 540 pounds. And I grow so fast with this. And you don't need a spotter. No. And you can't get really hurt. Because if you... No, you you just stop. Well, I mean, if you... If it... Like you go to failure... It's just, you just can't go anymore. Right. When you release it, there's like, it doesn't fall on you. Right. And you're supposed to use diminishing range. Like the first couple rep, you know, the first 15 to 40 repetitions of full range. And then you kind of march backwards. So the last repetition, you can't move. It's like an inch. And then. And it doesn't take much time. You're not, you're not doing them for an hour. No. Workouts 10 minutes. See, see so I don't get it. Like, I know. I, I, like people, people ask me if I'm in the NFL all the time or if i'm a ufc fighter or something like that i'm a little lean to 240 pounds you can see all my abs perfectly and uh like oh so you know what's your workout like and and i tell them 10 minutes i work out at home and they're like bullshit well i i say it in a way where i i probably look pretty serious and uh, like you'll explain that 
Like, how does that work? You must. Is that why they're flying off the shelves? Yeah, I think so. Dudes, uh, well, dudettes too. What about women? Because again, my wife did ask. You know, what what do I do with them? I said, I don't know. Yeah, uh, women are very happy with the product. Um, Will it build muscle? It'll build muscle in in a, in a in a feminine way. Like, you know, it's funny. The most admired female bodies are strong. They're yeah. not soft and weak. Yeah, but they're not. Uh, well, again, everyone's got their own taste. But when I see those girls that are like, they look like dudes with long hair yeah, working yeah. out. To yeah. me, it's like that's not Extra necessarily attractive. No. Just to me, though. No. Uh, there's two things going on when you see a, a woman like that. She's either like in pre-contest. Like, so she's very lean and very dehydrated, very depleted. So, you know, you're almost looking at like a skinned cadaver. I mean, male bodybuilders don't look all that great either. Like, ask a woman what she thinks of the guys who are on stage. It's like, what the hell's wrong with them? Uh, but that's part of it. And then the other part is a lot of physique competition has some male, uh, uh, male-driven dr- synthetic hormones in it, which yeah. are illegal chemicals. A lot steroids. Of women, yeah, steroids. Uh, so a lot of women take those. What if you're on T therapy, you're older, you're getting some testosterone, are you going to grow even more? Great question. WebMD defines testosterone therapy as being the same as natural. Now, is there an advantage to testosterone therapy? Not per se, but if you're at a deficit, then it will bring you back to a normal muscle building ability. So, like when somebody says, like, there's people on the internet kick and scream about everything you know it's just sort of like tantrum city when you when you open up uh facebook or instagram especially but, facebook oh yeah just everyone's like an uh, like an adult two-year-old I, I don't know what happened well i'll throw some shit on instagram and get nothing but rave reviews i'll, uh-huh. I'll my team will throw that over on facebook thinking you know another place to put it yeah dude bunch of crybaby bitches yeah it's unbelievable right. dude i think facebook has more more let's tr- let's say trolling? snowflakes. Yeah, yeah. It depends, like what it is. I think a political inflammation is work on uh, w- worse on Facebook. Um, there's a lot of reading in Facebook, and I and I don't think the fitness, the traditional fitness and bodybuilding community is really good at reading. I'm serious. Uh, uh, most fitness information is found on YouTube and Instagram, video and pictures. Yeah, that's that's illiteracy. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> diet is, is important, yes? Yes, yes, and I cover that in the book. Uh, and my, my, my diet is probably something I'm, I'm equally as criticized for uh, because it's pretty unconventional. I, I what pretty is much, it? I tell people to eat meat, and that's it. That's it? Yep. You know, it's funny that you say that because I always say I'm on keto, which I'm not really because I don't do the fat measurements. Sure. But I eat meat. Meat, vegetables. I'm not worried about fat, but meat, vegetables is pretty much all I eat when I'm dieting. Right. And I drop weight fast. I feel better. Yeah. I, I, I have all the energy in the world. People say, you know, the keto flu. I never get that. I think I'm thriving on the yeah. keto or paleo, more meat diet. Yeah. Um, the paleo books make some mistakes, but the idea of the original idea of paleo is like eating like our ancestors did. Uh, making it very seasonal. Like, when do carbohydrates exist in nature? Um, in let's vegetables. Say, let, let's say we plants. were. Let's say we were in a native tribe here in Vegas. Yeah. And we knew where the peach trees were. Yeah. When would there be peaches? Whenever they. I don't know. I'm not a fucking okay. bot- herbologist, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but herbologist, like once yeah. a year, don't they grow yeah, every yeah, year? Be, dude, it would only be like at the at the end of fall. And so, when, when, <laughs> I, sorry, how I do you know? You that. Well, I looked into it, dude. Yeah, like I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. So when are peaches like, well, blooming? Yeah, like yeah, peaches come out you know, tw- kind of towards the end of the warm season, and we would only have access to them right before the winter, where it would be advantageous to be fatter. Yeah, it's a survival mechanism. 
So we would gorge ourselves on peaches. We'd stop hunting deer and rabbits, and we'd eat the peaches, and we'd get a little bit fatter. And so we went without food in the wintertime. We could live off our own body fat for days. You can go for a month without food if you have a serious amount of um, adipose tissue. So fat. Uh, but it also keeps you better insulated. So, like, fat people are kind of cold proof. There's more to love. Uh, well, yeah, sure. They also uh, get le- they also get less opportunity in business and life. They do. Yeah, I yeah. keep telling people they're like, you can't say that. I'm like, dude, it's just the truth. Like, yeah. you know, if I if I'm if I'm interviewing, there's and, research and, on that. Right? Yeah, and a big, huge, fat person walks in. Yeah. Versus a buff person, you know, you just nat you just naturally think you know. Because, well, look, I mean, I'm looking for someone to come help me. I'm, I want the person with the discipline, with the labor, with the, you know. So it's like it's a bummer because my, uh, you know, I've, I've been fat, not that fat. But yeah, sure. as I'm fatter, dude, I'm telling you, my opportunities, less people look, less people talk, oh, less yeah. people admire. Yeah, it's, it's uh, and, and here's another thing you hear, especially women complain about. Uh, like, oh, I put all my body fat in my thighs or in my butt or in my neck or, you know, whatever. It's like, okay, well, I got an answer for you. I got exactly what you need. And they're like, really? What is it? I'm like, just be lean. Because everybody looks the same when they're lean. It doesn't matter where you deposit body fat if you're lean. Yeah, but that is true. You can deposit body fat certain places, right? Uh, yeah, like it's right more here? genetically linked. Yeah, like guys, like, you know, sort of the, the you know, over the kidneys kind of area. And, and to get rid of all of it, you just got to get leaned down to what percentage body fat? It depends. Like, probably seven. You ever see those skinny fat dudes? Yeah. They're like... Like they're vegans? Like, yeah. No, they're like skinny, but when they rip off their shirt, they still look fat and soft. Yeah, they're soft, and they have, like, cellulite on, like, you know, their chest. Now, you take, now you yeah, take, you, you take a guy like that right now. You personally train him for 90 days using the X3 bar system and they what? eat what i tell them to eat and they eat what you tell them what would they oh, look like infinitely better they like, look like, like night and day people. night and day night and day see how come people don't you do you have a challenge of any kind no i really haven't done Dude, that'll, I, I, I got i gotta do that I know. well yeah because number one you want to sell more systems i'm sure sure that'll sell a system you know okay. the 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 90 day x3 challenge you know and boom they got to buy a system of course and the whole I guess mental advantage of a challenge is people want to challenge. Yeah. I don't know why that is. This is just inherent. It's a contest. They want to win. Because what I'm thinking as I'm sitting here talking to you is like, because I just got the shit. If you showed me exactly what to do exercise wise, I'll, when I get home, like I'll start like, you know, tomorrow, I'll get home, I'll take the whole before and afters. Because right now I don't look bad with my shirt off, but I'm definitely not Mr. Freaking kick ass looking and i'll do it for 90 days like i can eat tuna out of a can for a year if i i just have that yeah. ability so like you show me what to do on this day do this 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 repeat it repeat it repeat it yeah. i'll do it i'll do it in the morning 10 yeah. minutes yeah i'll do it before i go to bed 10 yeah. minutes yeah for 90 days yeah and i'll be your before and after bro all right are you really gonna stick to it well yeah otherwise i'd be screwing you like yeah, I, 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 and myself but yeah, well, I'll stick to it because dude, you, you're 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 in for a great ride. Like, because w- once you do the diet and and the superior exercise X three, uh, it's 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 like like people will within two weeks be like, "What are you doing?" Like, you look completely different. Well, that's what I want. Yeah, because again, you know, I've procrastinated so many times on getting in shape. Yeah, it's like I'm not saying anything this time. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And I don't want to be like Schwarzenegger. Right. I, I want to be more like just lean and sizable. I weigh, sure. I weigh, I weigh 230 right now. And last time I got in shape, I'll show you before and after, after this, mm-hmm. I went from 230 to 230. Like I never dropped weight. I just transitioned it. Yeah. 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 It was crazy. Like I, everyone kept saying, what do you weigh now, man? You look great. Same amount. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, Oh, so you were in really good shape. If you got lean at 2.30, that's... Yeah, I was... Well, I didn't get lean, lean. I went and did the whole body displacement or water displacement. I, I got to 10 and a half body fat. Okay. That's which not... Is, which that's, is pretty lean. That's all right. Pretty yeah. lean for me. That's uh, leaner than the top 1% of America. 
you could you could see you could see the top four abs starting to yeah. starting to see the the bottom ones. Yeah, like a slight outline of the bottom yeah. ones, right? Yeah, that's great. But I was in the gym and on the freaking treadmill and on the freaking uh, stairmaster. Like, and dude, I hate that shit. Yeah. yeah, I didn't like it at all. This book yeah. title. Weightlifting is a waste of time. So is cardio, and there is a better way to have the body you want. Like I hate cardio, but the oh, dudes yeah. that I know that are buff, they don't do cardio either. They they say uh-huh. screw the cardio. Yeah, yeah. Well, cardio gives you the opposite of what weight training does. It upregulates cortisol, like in a chronic perspective. The problem with that, like, there's no such thing as a bad hormone. So I don't want to say. Like, you don't want cortisol. Like, cortisol exists for a reason. When you get up in the morning, your cortisol goes up. That doesn't mean you should stay in bed all day. Uh, so, like, like a lot of the fitness kind of just silly people, don't, you know, the gurus that really don't know what they're talking about. Like, cortisol is the bad hormone. Growth hormone is the good one. No. But if you chronically upregulate your cortisol, meaning it doesn't fluctuate, it just goes up, you do that with cardio. And cortisol really does two things. Uh, well, it's an inflammatory to kind of slow you down and stop you. Uh, it, it, but it also diminishes muscle mass. So it forces you to metabolize the muscle you have. And it is protective, this is the important part, protective of body fat. So it keeps you fatter longer. So these women who go into the gym and they just do like an hour cardio a day, like, they're actually doing the opposite of what they should be doing. Like, they just guaranteed that their body fat is going to stick around longer than if they just did fasting or even uh, um, calorie restriction, which I'm not really a fan of. And the fasting superior. Well, when you're eating just meat, dude, you could eat tons of it and feel hungry still. You think so? I mean... If, if it's too lean. If you, do, if you try and do it with, like, chicken breast, oh, yeah, you'll, you'll stay hungry. But, uh, you know, you go for, like, regular uh, normal fat cuts. What's your normal meal? Um, two or three pounds of, like, New York steak or sirloin. I wonder That's one wonder what meal. that looks like, though. Two or three pounds. Is that a lot? Yeah. I don't order shit by the pounds. Okay. <laughs> I just yeah. say give me a steak. Like, what's a normal steak? Is that a half pound? Yeah, like, probably eight to ten ounces is a normal steak. And you're ordering three of those. Oh no, more than that. Four of those. Yeah, four steaks a meal. Yeah. So you're. N- oh, I only eat one meal a day, though. Oh really? Yeah. Why is that? It doesn't matter when you get your nutrition. You grow when you sleep. Really? Yeah. Every to every single you cannot grow when you're awake, or you just don't. Oh, uh, you can, but it's it's a little slower. So I just, you know, it, it there's there's been a couple studies looking at the timing of nutrition. You know, people, and they were specifically looking at muscle protein synthesis. <laughs> So what they would do is they would look at somebody who was trying to grow muscle and they ate five meals a day versus a person who ate one meal a day, but the same exact calories and macros and same meals, same, but just one person's getting it all at once. They grew exactly the same amount of muscle. How much faster do you think the muscle grows on your system using the X3? Well, our go to the reason we called it X3 was because there's a study that showed um, strength going up. It, it, me- it measured strength, not mass. But everyone knows that when you get stronger, you're putting on mass. Nobody, nobody says you need to shrink muscle to get stronger. Like that's obvious. What about density, though? Uh, well, in, you know, and there, there's also what percentage of the muscle growth is uh, what's called sarcoplasmic versus myofibril, which is density is myofibril sarcoplasmic is more volumization so more like contractile fuel in the cell like your sort of gas tank of your cell is bigger so there's really the two ways to to grow muscle uh from a mechanical you know, viewpoint of looking at the actual tissue and then there's there's other aspects of that too like like trying to uh, suppress myostatin with um with kind of locking blood out of the muscle. That is another principle. So ultimately, um, you can, what was the question? I, I was, I, I went down a path and I'm like, I'm getting too detailed here. Well, here's another question. All right. Cardio for the heart. No. Ah, there's more than a, there's a, a meta analysis that I reference in the book, which references over a hundred other studies. 
So a meta-analysis is like a combination of multiple studies on the same subject. You can make your heart just as healthy lifting weights than you can with cardiovascular exercise. So there's a myth that somebody who does strength training has poorer cardiovascular health. And I'll tell you where the myth came from. Uh, there, you can see this when you take a muscular athlete. Like, like uh, you ever been to the Munich airport? You know, there's like stairs everywhere. Like you get there and you got to change flights. So I, I usually go through Munich to go to Moscow. And I was with a uh, like guy who was w uh, working with me, but he's a really skinny guy. And uh, like a marathon kind of guy. And we're running up and down the stairs to go through immigration, uh, to go through, you have to go through some Russian security before you get on a plane to Moscow. And uh, then you got to get your bag, and then they got to look at your bag. It's like, it's just running up and down these stairs. Like whoever designed the Munich airport, like I want to I wanna throw that guy down one of those flights of stairs. It's a terrible airport. Uh, but I'm like out of breath because we're like hustling because our plane came in late and we want to make our connecting flight. And so I'm out of breath and the guy's like, God, I thought you had good cardio. And I'm like, I do. My legs are four times bigger around than yours are. So when they contract, they need more blood. So it's like, it's just the size of the engine. Like you drive around the block in a Lamborghini you know, a, a V10, you know, 5.2 liter V10, your mileage is not going to be the same as your Honda Civic. Yeah. It, it's just the size of engine. So it doesn't mean poor health. It means you're not built for endurance because you haven't been doing endurance type exercise. So, so but, but the, the harm, well, not harm, but should someone do cardio in your opinion? No. You I mean, shouldn't even do it Unless their goal is to be like a distance runner. Yeah. Like if you want to be a great a great marathon runner, you got to run marathons. There's no way around it. Like or if you want to be a boxer. Yep. Like you better freaking or a fighter of any kind, well, you better have some wind. Yeah, but you can get that from strength training and boxing endurance type training. You don't need to go out and run. Mm. But uh yeah, I mean like ultimately if your objective is to exert energy at a certain rate for an extended period of time, you must train accordingly because yeah. you don't want to put on a bunch of muscle mass. Like every once in a while, like when the UFC was new and uh, it was, it was a lot more fun when it was new because there was some weird stuff that would happen. Like there was some bodybuilder guy who decided to become a fighter. And this guy was like 260 pounds and he looked like he was ready for a bodybuilding stage. And Joe Rogan was making the comment, like when blood starts pumping to, to that guy's muscle, He's going to practically black out. And because, like, Joe's really explaining the research, but he's not making research references. He's just saying a big muscle draws a lot of blood and makes it seem like you don't have endurance. And sure enough, this guy, <laughs> he lasted like 30 seconds. He wore himself out. And then he was useless and, and lost. Uh, and then I never saw that guy again. But, uh, it's just an example of if you are designing your own body and like strength training or even more specifically X3 really targets a very high speed, high power athlete. And then all of a sudden you throw that athlete in a totally different situation. They're not going to excel. Yeah. Yeah. They're not conditioned. Not for that. Yeah. Right. The question before this one was how much faster? You said that's why we call it oh, X3. Thank you, yeah. So, so three times, I would imagine. Right, so so the research showed strength gains were three times faster in the same period of time w with collegiate athletes. So already developed people, people who are much harder to stimulate strength in. Because I, I like that study because a lot of studies will take people who have never exercised before, and it's like, well, okay, you made somebody stronger who's never worked out before. That's pretty easy. Uh, you know, they call it beginner gains. Like it's really, it's really easy to make somebody never train stronger, but an already strong person harder. So, uh, already collegiate athletes and they divide them into two groups. One did regular training and they measured their strength output changes and one did, uh, variable resistance training. 
to a small degree. So they would put bands and weights together. But few, so and they they got stronger three you know, at, at triple the speed. So that's why I called it X three. Muscle mass isn't so much measured in research because the mass itself doesn't really create a performance difference. Sometimes it's a performance detriment unless you want to be heavier like in football. Uh, but it's still not really what's measured. Yeah, but if I, so, if I, let's say I have 16-inch arms and I want, you know, 21-inch arms, is it, mm-hmm. is it genetics or is it just time? Uh, I'd say it's time and nutrition before it's genetics. So, it, so a lot of people can get big arms if they want them. Yep. And then what about, uh, cause if I'm listening to this, I'm thinking shit, dude, 10 minutes versus an hour in the gym, yeah. minimum 40 minutes, minimum yeah. 10 minutes times valuable nowadays. I think people are waking up to that, especially uh-huh. in the entrepreneur space. You're building the business, dude, for you save 30 minutes working out. Yeah. That's, that's huge. That's huge. Every day. Every day. That's yeah, a lot of minutes every day. That's like a difference between somebody who succeeds and someone who doesn't. That's huge. So so this takes ten minutes. You don't get sore or you don't get as sore. If somebody's a non exerciser and they start using it, they may be a little tender for like the first week. That's it. But not limiting. Like you can do an X three session. And then the next morning, go out and play golf, and you you will not be hindered at all. Okay, so it's ten minutes. You don't you don't get sore. Yeah. You get strong three times faster than going and wasting right. time in the gym. Yeah, it, it, it it's proven study or or, or case after case. It, where's all these? Where's all the referrals? X three bar dot com. I mean, not referrals. Uh, people going, holy shit. Oh, the, the testimony. Yeah, they're on the website. They're on x3bar.com. Yeah. Yeah, and I I try not to be the guy who comes on podcasts and, like, pitches a product. I mean, you, you, yeah, you're you asking the questions, so sure, I'm answering. But uh, I would urge people to get the book. Like, because it sounds, what, what I'm saying sounds um, crazy. Too good to be true. Yeah, too good to be true. It doesn't Just sound crazy. It's like, oh, yeah, right. Come on, dude. You can't. That sounds like a shortcut. Everyone always told me there's no shortcuts in life when there are. I already tell people that. Yeah, but dude, this sounds like a no brainer. Like, I don't even know how much it is. I I don't. I think I paid under five six hundred bucks. I know. Yeah, it's five hundred fifty. Okay. And then there's another but, band. But a, but a gym membership, bro, is like more than that, and you don't even use it. Yeah. So, like, this is a one time. I don't just keep paying well, also, you every month. Also, like, if somebody gets a home gym, they get, like, a rack and bars and weights. Like, they're spending three or $4,000. Oh, and they lose, a, like, they lose, like, a parking spot in their garage. Yeah, but nowadays, bro, the the, the weight shot through the roof when COVID hit. Oh, yeah, that's true. You yeah. couldn't find home them. Equipment. Home equipment. Home equipment was ridiculous. Yeah, it sure is. My buddy just put a little spot. I mean, he did a pretty good job, but he spent 30000 mm-hmm. Couldn't even find them. Yours under a nickel works better than all of those equipment put yeah. together and in a fraction of the time no pain yeah. no ligament tendonitis because here's another thing i go to the gym and i start getting this freaking pain right here right here in this like in the elbow yeah yeah and yeah. i don't and i don't know what it is but i'll tell you when i get pain in my body i stop yeah people laugh at me you just gotta work through that i'm like no to me no. if your body's pain in pain it's telling you stop doing that that's what pain is it's yeah, a signal to say you're is, damaging yourself that's true yeah right if you get glass stuck in the bottom of your foot do you go i'm just gonna power through this no or do you stop and pull the glass out yeah i stop and i and right I, and like if joints are giving you pain it's the same kind of thing like just stop it's a signal yeah too heavy too too many times something yep so it just it just i can't stress enough if this is like this is all fact, and it is. I mean, I, I can't personally say, oh, I've done it because I'm just starting. Mm-hmm. But I can say I looked at your website and researched the shit out of you before I bought it. I can tell you right now, dude, this is probably the new thing. Like, yeah. the, yeah, it'll, re- it'll replace, replace weight training. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think of the gym business? Are they just going to all have your, your system on the on the decks out there? When I think you some up? of them will. Uh, I think it'll go back. What I'm hoping for is that, Gyms start having the product, and personal trainers are actually forced to, instead of depending on the machines that are easy to use but ineffective, 
uh, really connecting with their clients and uh, getting them to use that right. And they're going to see much better results. Uh, they're also, because it functions more like free weights, the experience uh, of working with someone in X3 is just much better. Uh, because it, it requires, for somebody who's not fully educated on how it works, if they hire a trainer instead of going and watching the videos or whatever, there's a great level of connection from client to trainer. And uh, I think that'll be a more enjoyable experience. Because, like, right now, like, trainers take somebody over to, like, the leg press, pick a weight that they know is appropriate for whatever they perceive the person's strength. And they're, like, reading Instagram while the person's going through, you know, repetitions. They don't have to be that involved. Because the machine's sort of mm, so basic, they don't really have to pay attention. That's not a good thing. Yeah, It's a bad thing. What about what about uh, targeting? Like in other words, I want big softball looking deltoids. Like do you, do the do the do the system touch every body part? Every body part. So if I just want if I want like you know the traps that look like freaking boom, it, there's yeah. something that hits yeah. those. There's something that hits the delts. There's something that hits the tr triceps. Yeah, everything. So you can't. There's nothing that's missed out. You can get big ass legs, right? Tight ass glutes. That's right. That's what I got to work on. My wife doesn't think I can develop my glutes. All right. Well, you can. <laughs> well, I'm going yeah, to. And you better show her every day. <laughs> yeah, you can tell her I said that. Dude, what about vascularity? Oh, well, that's a function of how lean you are. Like, so, and so not everybody loves that. Like, I like it when it looks like there's lightning bolts going through my chest. I think that's awesome. Not the chest, but I'd take definitely the forearms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll you'll get that. And the and the one that goes right up th through there. Through the bicep, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's that's almost unavoidable. Really? Yeah. Why do you but, think that is? Just because it's leaning you out? Oh uh, yeah, because you do drop a lot of body fat. There's a huge influence on growth hormone based on the self stabilization firing. This is why free weights uh, work better than machines is a self-stabilizing firing of muscle that's another thing you know you know how sometimes you step on those things and it's like you feel these the shakiness that you yeah. don't feel on other systems is that that yeah what are they small twitch or stabilizer muscles uh, it's, just firing? it's just stabilizer it's actually a different like different set of muscles like the front of your shin that muscle doesn't fire when you're using a, a machine, but when you're balancing yourself, doing toe raises, oh, yeah, that is heavily involved. That's the antagonist. That's what keeps you from falling. And when that becomes active, then growth hormone goes up by a lot. But if you add weight to that self-stabilization, beyond 2,000%. So what do you? Uh, why would you get into this like what made you think you know there's a better way of doing this because you, you must have lifted weights before i did and uh, i didn't get hardly anything out of it like people would say if i took my shirt off like oh yeah you work out yeah good job but it wasn't like you know it is now where i'll i'll walk into you know a grocery store and you know somebody will be like oh my god like, are you in the NFL? Or hey, here's my favorite one is, can I have your autograph? And I'm like, who do you think I am? And they're like, I don't know, but you're probably in the NFL. Or you're probably a UFC fighter. And I'm like, no, I'm a scientist. But uh, I'll sign something for you. Sure. <laughs> uh, like they're really thrown off by that scientist thing. Like, what? Uh, but but anyway, they like I it, it gets a lot of attention, uh, what, what kind of shape I'm in. And it's very starkly contrasted from when i lifted i didn't really look like anything uh when i lifted and it's part of the reason i reference a lot of the research on the average conditioning um, or even the top one percent top one percent of males in the united states are uh 10.9 percent body fat that's the best wow and that's really not that impressive you were 10.6 and you Still, we're not. 10.5. Okay, 10.5. Uh, you sure? Because you said 10.6 about 15 minutes ago. 10, oh, ten and a half. I said 10, ten and a half. half. Okay, yeah. 10. Uh, that's, that's better. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot better than. And I look pretty good, but no, uh, dude, I wasn't. I, I still had a long way to go. In my right. Opinion. It's not like, you know, you took off your shirt at the beach, someone would go, oh my God. Yeah. Like, 
Nobody did that. Yeah. But they did say, oh, my God, because I worked because it was me. Right. Like, I'll show you the before, before and after. Sure. It looked like the before looked like I, I needed a open heart surgery wound on my chest. In other words, it, it, it looked like someone took a butter knife and just smeared my, my pecs down. Like, it, it. like in other words, just, it, it was like, dude, you were just like, you a, look like a melted ice cream cone. It I got did. It. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, you know, let's say five months later, uh, you know, I had shape. It was like, boom, like, God dang, dude, you look yeah. good. Yeah. But I didn't have the bottom abs. I didn't have, I didn't have the, uh, this was still, there a little bit i didn't like yeah, it I, yeah. I probably had two to three percent to go to be to be ripped sure yeah there's a huge difference between seven percent seven and, and ten there's a huge yeah, difference huge difference is that healthy walking around at seven percent yep absolutely uh your body starts to fight you a little bit it becomes a little more challenging beneath seven from everything i've i've taken in in my own personal experience but think about this the leanest 1%, and, and one of the pre premises of the book is that this industry, the fitness industry, and the nutrition industry has completely failed. Fitness is probably the most failed human endeavor. The leanest people are not even that lean or impressive, and one in six males over the age of 18 have used anabolic steroids or are currently using anabolic steroids. So clearly that's not doing enough. If that many people are using performance enhancing drugs and they all still look like nothing, like why be protective of the way things have been done? Like there is no orthodox way of doing this because it sucks, obviously. Like if, if uh, you know, this is like a lower than 1% success rate. So would you invest with a firm that lost... 99% of the investment funding? Probably not. not you would not invest not, in that company. Not ideally, no. <laughs> no. Uh, so and when I look at the fitness industry, like it is so failed. And yeah, you can, you can say, well, there's also the self-control uh, uh, with nutrition and things like that. Okay. Uh, I, would also, I would also say, as I'm quoting the CEO of OsteoStrong, he says, the best, best diet is the one you'll follow. Yeah. And I love that because uh, it, it points out, like, you can be unreasonable about your dietary recommendations and produce a you know, set of nutritional principles that will get, you know, one-tenth of one percent of people fit and everybody else frustrated. So when I say you kind of eat steak and then, you know, because you have no carbohydrates or very little carbohydrates, your, your appetite is really suppressed because it's carbohydrates to stimulate our appetite. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what suppresses the ghrelin and the leptin. Those, those are two hormones. So, that so if you eat, like, you know, a couple pieces of toast, that'll actually make you hungrier? Yep. In dead. fact. I always thought it was Chinese food. Well, carbohydrates. Yeah. Because I eat Chinese food, I'm hungry as shit later. But well, it, it, some, it, of it, some of it has MSG in it, which is a separate appetite stimulant. But that's the same with sushi, though. I'll, I'll go get, you know, some. Rice. Some... It's simple. There, there's actually a, a great nutrition program out there produced by a friend of mine named Stan Efferding. Uh, it's called the Vertical Diet. And he uses rice to stimulate your nutrition so you can eat more steak. And I, this guy's like a 320-pound bodybuilder. He's just a monster. Uh, and he, that's who his customers are. They're, they're, they're all headed in that direction also. So he uses it to stimulate. But it's still not like he's not saying there's nutritional value in carbohydrates. He's just saying it's an appetite stimulant. So that's how you should use it, uh, which is a very interesting approach. And, uh, yeah, I, I like it. It's not what I do. But I like it. What do you think, uh, like, as far as somebody that just wants to be, you know, lean and strong but not too muscular, is there they just don't do as much of the X3? or, or? I would say get there. Get there as quickly as possible, and you're doing the same thing that the NFL players are doing. Uh, the Miami Heat, you know, the reason we got the endorsement is because the Miami Heat uses X3. Uh, and uh, you know, now there's a, a few of the Lakers, I probably shouldn't mention the names because i don't pay any of these guys 
all the athlete endorsements, there's over 40 of them. I didn't pay a single penny for them. They just used the product and gave me a call and was like, your thing's awesome. And I'm like, hey, can I put a small picture of you on the website? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what I was trying to figure yeah. out with the how 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 fast because like in 90 days if I did it, would I be night and day different? You know, given where you are, like I don't know if, if for the people who listen or the people who watch the show, Brad's in pretty good shape now. So you're not that far away from what you want. But not size wise. Like I'll no, grow, yeah, you, won't you, I? Yeah, you'll grow. Uh, but you grow a lot quicker than you think. You grow three times quicker than you probably ever experienced. Yeah. But in ninety days, you can get some pretty good size, pretty decent. I think results. so. There's there's a, a group of people. Usually, when I when I take a testimonial, it's somebody who's put on more than twenty pounds of muscle in less than six months, which which is, is lightning fast. Yeah, that's just unheard of. With no steroids. No steroids. But that is eating clean. Yep. And what's this Fortigen? Or ah, so Fortigen is. Um, I saw a real deficit in the tr- nutritional supplement industry, and in a way, I kind of understand because people are are very. Um, the, f- the fitness industry tends to be bargain hunters, so it's quantity over quality. But w- the problem is with the type of thing the Fortigen is. It's an essential amino acid complex. Uh when you buy based on price, you get something that does nothing because it's just, you might as well be eating sand. Uh, so what Fortigen is, is it's an adaptation of a cancer supplement. It was given to cancer patients for, you know, back in like the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and it had a lot of different chemical names before. Uh, and so what I did was I adapted this for anabolic purposes and it's made out of bacterial fermentation. So we humans are supposed to eat rotting stuff, but we don't for obvious like sanitation reasons and you, know, you can get sick from that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, we have kombucha here, but it's not the same. It doesn't have the same profile. Yeah, we have kimchi here. And if you eat kimchi in, um, in Korea, You'll get a lot more of it because they put it on everything. But it's still not exactly the thing that's quite right for muscle growth. But you are getting a serious amount of essential amino acids with fer- fermented products. Uh, the, the problem is they're made wrong with most companies. And so most people take essential amino acids. And they're like, I've, I've never seen a difference. I just thought I needed this for growth. But this by itself I never saw as like growth factor it's incredibly powerful because it enables you to get your nutrition in uh without like pounds and pounds of meat and specifically protein yeah the well the essential amino acids so the important part of the protein really there is no other important part of the protein other than the essential amino acids because the non-essential ones your body can make on their own I know, but when I start to, you know, think, okay, I'm going to bulk up because I've attempted and then stop. But you're always reading that you need X amount of protein per pound of your body weight. So I'm yeah, thinking, one okay. gram per pound of body weight. That's yeah, so I need like 203. Right. You got to eat your ass off to get that. Not with Fortigen. That's so, what I'm saying. So right. Fortigen will give you a couple hundred grams a day equivalent. Yeah. E- each serving is the equivalent of 50 grams of protein. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's you, like, it looks like lemonade. Like what, you see right through it. You take it four times a day or something? I, I I was taking it twice a day, so I was getting the equivalent of 100. So I only had to have like 150 grams from steak, so like a pound and a half of steak was a lot easier to take down in one meal than three pounds, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, but now um, I've started to up the, the protein and even go down more on the, on the actual real food. What about sauces? Yeah, uh, like you a steak watch that. with a one is better than a steak without one. <laughs> uh, man, we got to talk about steakhouses. <laughs> what about like barbecue sauce? Yeah, I mean barbecue sauce is just a melted candy bar. Really? So, yeah. See, yeah, you don't. What about sour cream? A uh, sour cream is better because there's animal fat in that. Yeah, because sour cream on anything's better, but. I'm yeah. following that keto, supposedly, but I'm not measuring my fat. So, it basically, it's giving me an excuse to lather on the freaking cheese and, yeah, sure. and the sour cream and all the shit keto gives away get, 
gives you. Do you think there's any validity to the keto diet? Well, keto diet and carnivore diet are are pretty close. Uh, you would ketogenic nutrition does include well. It depends on the on the recommendation. I actually I don't like the idea of calling a diet ketogenic because ketogenesis is a principle of human physiology. Your body shifts into ketosis. So it doesn't come from a diet. It comes from your body. And when uh, another thing I do is extended fasted periods. So I'll go 72 hours with no food. Uh, and this is when I really want to drop a lot of body fat quick. Zero food or, or zero solid food? Zero food. Zero nutrition? Zero nothing. Wow. Yeah. Water? Uh, I can't have water uh, or coffee. And then I can have Fortigen too because that's – you need you need fifty grams of or, uh, sorry fifty calories to break a fast, you know because it's not like if you accidentally swallow a fly like oh no I ruined my fast, like no your body is not shifting gears into metabolizing food so, um, <clears throat> when when you're in uh, like a what what specifically was the question I really want to get to exactly what you asked well. The, it, it was I was driving towards you basically went 72 hours without eating or no five right. days and actually gained more muscle you were telling but me that was a fortigen experiment yeah so that wasn't the standard fast I did four servings of fortigen per day and I had no other food other than that for five and for five days or for something. five days and once I rehydrated I had uh, five more pounds of muscle so a lot of people will tell you if you starve yourself, you're not going to grow. Shit, you you yeah, starved well, yourself and grew. They're they're wrong, and there's plenty of research that shows that a, a very high protein and a high quality of protein diet, meaning mostly meats, uh, you can gain muscle and lose body fat at the same time, and you're at a, a caloric uh, deficit. Now um, you you need to be at a protein surplus to build muscle. Protein surplus means like a lot of fortigen or a lot of uh, a lot of animal protein, and like I said, that's hard to choke down. So that's why I created fortigen out of that cancer. Where treatment. do you, where do you get that? Uh, just on the website x3bar.com or jaguarsbiomedical.com. But yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. it's there. Fortigen. Fortigen or or drj.com. Just click on superior nutrition. What there. about and last? I know you got to run. What about vegans? saying that you know our bodies are not designed as a you know anatomy type thing for eating meat we are technically supposed to be eating nuts and berries and vegetables yeah they're wrong that's total total farce (laughs) so they like it's it's and it's it's obvious uh there's 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 and for many different reasons i i wouldn't even know where to start when i hear something like that but so I mean, hey, anore- anorexics think they're doing the right thing too. Yeah. So you know, I, I I think veganism will go down in history like anorexia and bulimia, like it's just a disorder. So, um, so we're they <laughs> fooled themselves in a thing, and I don't want to pick on these people. I just think they're misled. Well, some of them are doing it because they feel bad for animals. So they're so they're like, I I get those. More you know what? Th- more they're than- killing animals anyway. Who is? Vegans, How? because any farmland, like right now, uh, vegetable farming in the United States destroys seven billion animals a year. These are squirrels, gophers, birds. Birds get poisoned by the tens of thousands when they fly into a cornfield. Uh, they have little feeders that sit above the, the corn stalks, and they're full of poisoned seed. And so dead birds everywhere, and they just shovel them up. See, this so is good it, ammunition because my daughter's vegan. Oh yeah, oh she's gonna love this podcast. Yeah, well Definitely. I'm gonna well she, well she does listen to him, and okay. I, and I, and I always I always bring her up only because she just loves animals. So well let me let's 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 go down that path. Like it, life's wonderful, but any species that's expanding is taking away resources from another species. So nature does not have an abundance of anything. It has a balance. And that balance is really important. So like the amount of vegetation that grows requires animals to eat it so they carry the seeds somewhere else. 
right? If nothing's eating it, the seeds never get carried anywhere, and it actually doesn't help the growth of that particular plant, like from a, you know, a global perspective. So resources are what we're competing against, and if you are building vegetable farms, you're taking away resources from other animals and destroying them. And, like, uh, I went to high school in the Napa Valley. I saw deer being shot all the time. Not every day, but pretty close. Deer hops into a, a vineyard, and they can't, like, usher it out. They can't, like, you know, give it a beer and be like, hey, come on. Can't be here. They shoot it. Kill it. So the wine industry blowing deer away all the time. Uh, so that means if you drink wine, you're supporting you're supporting the deer being killed. Right. Yeah. So it's like there's no we are an expanding. Uh, humans are, are it, it, we're an expanding population. We're going to take away resources from other populations of other living things. That's just the way it works. So whether you want to eat plants or whether you want to eat animals, death is involved when your species is growing. Huh? Listen to that one. Folks, if you guys haven't been convinced by now, if that's if you want to be, you know, kick-ass looking and in shape and freaking spend 10 minutes as opposed to an hour driving to and fro. And apparently the diet, again, I mean, I, I, I'll bet you anything if someone does – the, the X3 system and still has a sensible diet, they're going to get some results. Sure. They, don't, they don't have to eat 20 pounds well, of meat. Well, I, I would say, like, like Fortigen is the shortcut. That's why I created Is that vegan-friendly? It actually is, because bacteria is not an animal. Yeah. So there's I, I'll tell vegans, I, I'm super friendly with them. I don't ridicule them. I tell them what they're doing is wrong, but, I mean, hey, man, I'll help you. <laughs> Like, I don't want to pick on these guys. Like, a lot of them think I'm... But uh, you should come out with a vegan Fortigen. Just say vegan and peop, peop, the vegans buy it. All Fortigen is vegan. And you know how many products out there that say vegan that probably aren't? Yeah. Just Just like when it says, like, you know, sugar-free. Like, I get these sugar-free Reese's peanut butter cups. They're <laughs> sugar-free. Well, the keto... Sugar-free Red Bull has sugar in it. Keto says, yeah, keto says you like, can have them. Well, I take the little strips... Yeah. The, it, you know the the piss strips to see if you're in ketosis as soon as i have you know a couple of those uh yeah peanut butter cups dude no, the, it, 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 the, the pink yeah, goes sure. from dark pink to light pink huh. so when they say you can have those those are sugar free i'm thinking who's testing these bitches to yeah. think to see yeah it's you think sugar's bad yes is there any is there any is there any life or, or tip life hack tip hack right now based on man if you guys are going to do one thing listen to this and you'll okay. have a better life yes um i i think in the society we live in today conditioned to eat sweet stuff there is a way to get a, there, there's a way to get away with eating low glycemic value carbohydrates so candy and shit um the way to get away with it is having it immediately after your workout so that it goes into muscle glycogen and doesn't get stored as fat. And uh, then if you stretch muscle and use a vasodilator like Epimedium or Viagra uh, to open up your blood vessels, you can actually grow muscle faster because you're hydrating the muscle better. And, and, I, and I detail this over 20 pages of the book. So and you should take Viagra to work out? Wouldn't that make the workout a lot harder? <laughs> Uh, God, the jokes, the jokes are free. That's yeah. You guys should probably write that down. Uh, so I, <laughs> uh, it does not make the workout harder. Uh, but it, it does stay in your system for about seven hours. So you know, and it's all about blood, really, to the muscle when you get yeah, to the end of yeah. It. So you know, Viagra is not just about your genitals. It, it opens up blood flow to everywhere, and you get that blood flow into muscle. And you can stretch out the muscle fascia, the casing around the muscle a little bit, and you can you can grow from a different perspective. You can actually have muscle cells split, which is a, a process called hyperplasia. Uh, and I, I detail this in the book. And again, you know, there's a little bit of an apology from me. It is very scientific, but uh, you don't have to remember the references. You just have to remember what to do, and it's pretty easy. You take your vasodilator an hour before you work out. 
you work out and you have carbohydrates afterward and there's there's some nuances of you use an equation to find the exact right amount of carbohydrates so you don't have much of an insulin event but uh it really works it's great well i'm going to be your guinea pig i'm going to do a before and after pose picture maybe yeah. i'll end up on on your website mm. i'm going to straight up do it for 90 days before and after i'm going to just procrastinate for a week or two and then get started yeah. Okay. As, as long as I know exactly what to do and exactly what Pass to Pass Halloween. Folks, if you guys uh, want to follow Mr. or I should say Dr. John Jaquish, you just go to johnjaquish.com. Follow him on Instagram at D R J A Q U I S H. Dr. Jaquish. The best place is drj.com because that's like a landing page that's got links to everything. So, uh, Look, yeah. Look Dr. him up J. on drj.com and go get this book, Weightlifting is a Waste of Time, So is Cardio, and There's a Better Way to Have the Body You Want. I appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. This is great. Folks, make sure if you hit him up, hashtag bomb squad. Also, if this didn't necessarily hit you because you're already some buff dude and you think this is all bullshit, well, share it out then because someone else might need to hear it. Until yeah, next time. Please kick and scream. All the trolls get a lot of business for me. Yeah. So throw a tantrum. Get mad. <laughs> Till next time, kids. Yeah. Keep it real. Mm -hmm.